Welcome back. We continue our coverage of the Grandview Hotel disaster in downtown Ripon that occurred 50 years ago this morning. And today we talk to a familiar voice to our listeners. He's my color man on our broadcast, Bob Lukuski. Of course, he spent uh, more than 15 years as fire chief in Ripon. He was not in the fire department at the time of the Grandview Hotel fire, but he was a young man in our community. And, Bob, what we're going to ask you to do is go back to that morning. You lived on the south end of Watson Street, I believe, with your family. And take us back to that morning of February 1st, 1949. Well, I will, uh Aaron, and uh, thank you for uh, considering me, but uh, it was about 6.30 that morning that uh, I got up, or I heard the phone ring, my dad got up and answered the phone, and it was sis- his sister calling from Chicago, and he, she said, uh, George, uh, what's going on in Ripon? Uh, WGN reports that the Grandview Hotel burned to the ground, and there's a possibility of uh, five to seven fatalities, and my dad says, well, we didn't hear a thing on the south end of Ripon, and... Uh, he hung up and he said, uh, Bobby says, let's uh, get in the car and, and go downtown. And I guess I'll never forget coming over the top of Watson Street Hill and seeing the, the grand view for my 15 years of my early life, and there was nothing there that morning. And, of course, as we got closer to downtown, the uh, reality set in. When you look back and for our people my age, I don't, I can't fathom that hotel. Was that the biggest landmark in Ripon? Did that dominate the downtown? Well, it did. The only other thing, and I always looked forward when you were coming from Rosendale on Ripon, the twin uh, church steeples of the old Grace Lutheran and the congregation on Ransom Street. But any time you came down Watson Street, uh, uh, you saw the grand view, and obviously it wasn't there now. And, of course, the new City Hall building that's there now has the huge... Uh, structure that houses the now fire siren uh, that they used for years uh, before uh, the pager system came in for the fire departments. That was one of the controversies, Bob, that always surrounded the Grand View. As you said, you lived on the south end. You never heard a siren. You never heard a whistle. Nobody on that end heard anything from the fire? Well, I'm sure they didn't. And again, that was one of the drawbacks of any warning system. And uh, I believe the article stated that the wind was in the north and uh, we just didn't hear it. And obviously, you know, uh, in wintertime, Right today, uh, houses are shut up, and uh, it just wasn't the, the best system in the world. Of course, six people died in that fire, and later on you were in the fire department. You were the fire chief in Ripon. And, and obviously, growing up in the community, you heard the rumors that maybe it was arson, maybe it was murder. What did, what did you hear from people right after the fire as far as maybe a cause or the arson? Did the rumors start right away that day? Well, I don't know if they started that day, but they were probably out right away because, obviously, uh, they had multiple coverages. Uh, They were here from Milwaukee and all over the state of Wisconsin. And yes, the rumors were that, uh, hey, how could anything like this, the the building that stood for years and years, and all of a sudden this thing, and how did it get that fast to start? Uh, Sure, the rumors were there, Aaron. Having investigated arson fires, and I know you've handled a few, and there were more than one fatality while you were in the fire department. And based on the evidence, obviously, we don't have forensics reports. We don't have a lot of eyewitness testimony. But what from you read in the newspapers and what you've heard from other people, do you think it's a safe bet that that fire was intentional? And if it wasn't, what is another possible theory? Well, I don't know. Uh, the, the only theory that I read, and I just uh, had the privilege of taking a look at the uh, copy of the Rip and Commonwealth Press uh, of 50 years ago, and the fact that uh, it started on the third floor of that, that building, and it had such a quick start, and all of a sudden it, it burned down. But anything that we've ever investigated for is uh, to look for the point of origin, and I think they determined that. And uh, to have it go up uh, and down as quick as it did, uh, it just didn't have the makings of anything else but something that had to have been used on that particular fire. And it was never proven. And, of course, arson is the hardest thing to prove unless you see somebody that is going to uh, basically what they refer to as strike the match. Did you have a chance to attend the funeral services for any of the victims? Yes. Uh, I always remember that they had the funeral for Alice Callan in the gymnasium, of which is now we refer to it as the Ripon Middle School, of course, and that year it was the Ripon Senior High School, and uh, her service was in that uh, gymnasium. I'll never forget that. Was that a, a very sad moment for the community? I mean, I've seen pictures. It was a huge turnout. I think some of the younger children were pallbearers, uh, younger adults. Was that a very traumatic event for the city of Ripon at that time? Well, sure it was, and I think any any event like that, and it sticks out in your mind, and uh, there's there's a lot of other things that you, you've probably been a part of, but at that time, I guess I'll never forget it. 
Looking back on the Grandview Hotel, I've heard from people who always said not if it burns, but when it burns. So it was so big, it was so old. Were you surprised that it had burned down? I know the shock of seeing it gone, but you'd been in there. I, I don't know if you ate in there, but I know you'd been in that hotel. Were you surprised, looking back now, that it... That, were you surprised that it burned down? Well, yes, I was, and I guess as a 15-year-old, you don't realize what can happen. Uh, I think if I had uh, to do over again in, in the life that I've lived, uh, it was amazing, and it still is an amazing event, and uh, I'm sure it'll be with this community forever, really. Do you think with the technology we have today that we could have, if, if we had the fire happen, say, this morning, that we would have been able to, and just think back to what was left of the hotel in the rubble there, with the technology we have today and the forensics and the science, do you think we would have been able to answer the question of arson today with what we have at our disposal today? Well, possibly, and you never know that, Aaron. The only other comment I'd like to make is that uh, if the fire happened today and the fire service that's come on the way it has and the equipment that the, the city has bought uh, for us as firemen and stuff like and in fact, uh, the first area that the city of Ripon uh, was delivered, and I don't know what year that was, uh, but I believe that that was one of the main reasons that that was purchased because of the fact that they had to use hand ladders. And uh, when I started with the fire department in 62, uh, they still talked about that fire because there was a lot of firemen at that time that, that had to fight that fire. And they practiced extensively on that particular building. And, of course, then when it happens, it's nothing you cannot predict what that fire was going to do. Uh, but I know they tried their darndest and they had some good community help And uh, after reading that article. But to, to answer your question is uh, I would hope that the, in 50 years that uh, the technology has come along where they could have proved that because uh, it's still always in the background of a lot of people is that uh, we felt that the fire in the community was set and it was never proven. Records do show, and Bob brings a good point, that the fire department ladders no one above the second floor would have had a chance. None of the ladders at that time went above the window sills of the top of the second floor, according to contemporary. I don't know if you saw proof of that, but from what I've heard and pictures I've seen, anybody above the third floor, there was nothing in the city at that time that would have saved them. Well, no, and, and you have to look and you have to remember, you don't realize this is the, the topography and the height of that building. Uh, even if you put a ladder, you know, that street, uh, what is that, Pacific Street, uh, uh, slopes down and that building was just huge you know and, and as a 15 year old that was the biggest building in town and like you said the ladders did not reach and of course that was the only way they had because the rooms were in the back of the hotel and that's where your patrons were and again the wind from the north uh, it must just been a terrible terrible night to fight that fire coming up next the elegance of the hotel i played host to john philip souza among others they stay he stayed there one night we'll talk about the beauty of the hotel and, and what was lost in that fire 50 years ago this morning from some of the people who worked there and earned a living at the grandview coming up next